peace is not something you wish for. It's something you make, something you do, something you are, and something you give away. Robert Fulcom This moment is forgiving from the heart. In the stillness, I reflect on the aspects of my life that matter most. Health, family, safety, love, and more. Then I see in front of me a lake. I see ripples travel across the lake as a breeze touches the water's surface. This ripple effect is powerful. It is important. It is needed now in a world where there is war and civil unrest. So, I picture myself tossing a leaf or a daisy into the water as one small gesture. Sending feelings of peace into the world. As the water shimmers, the ripples begin their journey across the lake. I will not see when they reach land, but each wave will find a home, a place to settle. My single well-wishing thought, filled with feelings of peace, like the leaf or daisy, will reach someone somewhere and leave an imprint. This imprint will be peace and will make a difference. Greetings of peace, everyone. A very warm welcome once again to all. I'm Dimple, your host for this very wonderful three-episode journey of transforming my life through spiritual awakening. Another live talk brought to you by Meditation Cafe with Ms. Sona Bahari of Abu Dhabi. So we have finally reached our third part of a three-episode series. In episode one, we talked about the wake-up call. And then in episode two, we discussed the science of happiness. And today, in episode three, we are going to fly free. Do you want to? Well, please do take note that if you're joining us for the first time, Welcome aboard. You haven't missed anything because all our talks 
are independent of one another. And Meditation Cafe has been bringing to you lovely, valuable topics for more than two years now. And you can always go to our YouTube channel and catch up with our past talks and subscribe so you will be informed of all our future upcoming talks. We are greatly honored to serve you and wish to continue to be of service. So a couple of announcements before we begin. We have translations available in Mandarin. So if you need to uh, listen to the Mandarin version, please select in the translation box below. And as always, have some writing materials handy, notebook, pen, paper, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm sure you'll have a lot to note down and to ponder on later on. So we have had a wonderful talk previously. And now we are in episode three, Flying Free. So what is this episode all about? Are we trapped? Yes, trapped in a web of negative thinking or old habits? Do we want to reset our lives and not let the external world affect us no matter what happens? Lie free. So write down all your questions that comes along the way and in the Q&A session later on, we, with Sister Sona, with, me, with Miss Sona, we will gladly answer all your questions. So you can send us your questions in the message box below. So for those who have joined us for the first time and don't know our speaker, Miss Sona Bahari, I'll do a short introduction again. She has a lot of experience in practicing and teaching meditation for the past 30 years across 23 countries all around the world. And with her profound wisdom and experience, she can bring us some answers. Currently, since 2008, she's stationed in Abu Dhabi and speaks seven different languages and started meditation since the age of 16. So, I have so much to talk about her, but let's keep it short because I think you want to have more time given to the talk. So let's hear how to fly free from Ms. Sona Bahari. Over to you, Ms. Sona. Thank you, Dimple. Lovely to be back here again with everyone. And um, I hope some of you have followed us for the last two sessions as well. Those who are here for the first time, welcome, welcome. Yeah, so here's the topic of flying free. And you know, the first thing that comes to mind when you think of flying free, uh, a bird, isn't it? We all look up at the sky and we think, oh, if only I could be as free as that bird. And freedom is a really interesting word. You know, children tell their parents, when will I be free? You know, when will I be free from all the rules and regulations? And when can I just do what I want to do? Um, people who are in jail, you know, when will I be let free? When I, when will I be out of uh, being behind bars? And it's really interesting how everyone has their own take and their own way of seeing freedom. So I think it's really important to understand the meaning of freedom before we go any further. And then we can look into what is spiritual freedom. What is it that we are trying to achieve as students of life, as students of spirituality, as students of I, the inner being? What is freedom? So if you think about it, people want to be from mostly other people. Yes, some of us want to be free from the hot weather. And I can relate to that because in Abu Dhabi, it's hot for a good four or five months of the year. And, you know, I want to be free from having to be sweaty and I want to be free from having to be restricted, can't go out during the day. 
some people want to be free from certain places. Some people want to be free from certain circumstances, situations in their life. And I guess all of us feel like there's something or the other that is trapping me. You know, the wonderful symbol that um, I found, can you see this? It's a cage. And many of us really believe that we are trapped. We're like a little bird sitting inside the cage. And I want to be free. Life has created circumstances. Life has put certain people in front of me that have, you know, restricted my movements. And the wishes that I could be up there in the sky, flying free. But when you think about it, is it really situations and circumstances and people that are keeping me inside this cage? Because the original state, the original state of every soul, of each human being, of each being inside, is free. We were born free. And then as life continued and as the journey moved ahead, we started to actually develop various mechanisms. We started to develop various reactions and responses to the things that came along in life. And each one of us has our own ways of reacting and responding. But it also seems to me that we've all developed certain expectations of life, expectations and belief systems. And so each one of us has responded to what's happened in life by creating these various expectations around us how things could be, how things should be, how people should be around me as well. And all of these expectations start to trap us. In fact, from being free, free to be able to move through life, to meander through life, and to be able to manage everything that comes my way, it's almost like I start to limit myself. And I start to believe that I am trapped within this cage. Not so much of other people and the situations, but you know what really traps us? It's my own reactions. My own responses to situations. Responses that are not the way I would want to respond really but I seem to be stuck. Stuck within even belief systems of how things should be. I mean, how many of us can say, I have no belief systems, no expectations. Whatever happens, I can go with the flow. No. We've actually got stuck. Stuck because of our own inner way of thinking, our inner way of believing. And it's very clear to me because what seems to trap you is not a trap for me. And what traps me, what is my cage, is not a trap for you. You know, so somebody's particular behavior feels like it traps you. You know, I feel stuck when I'm around a particular person. I feel stuck in a particular situation. I feel like I don't know how to move comfortably. I can't be the true me, my real self, when there is an outside limitation. And so what we do is we blame the outside limitation be it a circumstance, a situation, you know, a place, a culture. It could be a culture. You know, I don't like living in this culture. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I'm stuck. It could be people. 
But actually, it's my own inability in managing these people. It's my own inability in learning how to manage the culture, the situation that I'm in, that makes me feel stuck. And why I feel stuck is because I have an expectation that the outside will provide an easy circumstance, an easy situation, that the people around me will be easy enough and that they will adapt to me rather than me adapting to them. And whenever I start to forget the incredible power that I have within me of being able to go with the flow, being able to be more adaptable, being able to actually work with the situations and people that are different to me. I start to limit myself and I start to put myself into a cage. So the cage is my own creation. And I am that tiny bird that lives within the cage and that keeps crying out saying, I want to be free. I've forgotten that actually my original state is freedom. In fact, the state of every human being is freedom. And that if I could be who I really was when I was born, free of all these expectations of attachments, belief systems, I would be free because I'd be able to be me without the cage in any situation. So what is stopping me from being me? You know, when you look at the cage, each and every one of these metal bars of the cage that is holding me in, it's different for each one of us. And yet each one of us is stuck in the cage. It is my attitudes, my expectations, my belief systems from my past, not from your past. Each one of us has our own journey and we've put ourselves into our own boxes, our own cages. That is what is limiting me. That is what is holding me back. That is what not, is not allowing me to grow and to be completely free, completely unbound, completely unlimited, despite whatever it is in my life that is happening on the outside. So here we are, and today we're going to discover what it is that is holding me into my cage. Now, the other interesting thing about every cage, and this is where it gets quite quite unique is that you can see this cage, right? And here you are, you're the bird inside. Now the cage has a door, the door can open. In fact, the door is always open. It's always unlocked. But what the bird does is the bird sits inside the cage. The bird comes to the edge of the cage and the bird actually looks up at the sky and says, oh, I wish I could be free. The bird sees all the other birds flying. And what does the bird do? The bird goes back inside the cage and says, oh dear, poor me, I'm stuck. How lucky are those birds who are free? What a joke. The bird could fly, but the bird chooses to stay within the cage. The bird chooses to stay stuck. Isn't this the story of our lives? I could fly. I could be free. But the secret lies in letting go. I need to actually have the courage to let go of what is holding me within the cage. I have to let go of all those attachments, attitudes, beliefs, expectations that I'm carrying with me that are creating my own cage and that are 
holding me. And if I do, the cage naturally dissolves. And I'm free. I'm a free bird who can fly. But if I keep holding on to all the bars of the cage, all the things that make me limited from unlimited, then there's nobody else who can free me. There is nobody else who can take me out of my cage. It's only me. So I'm going to ask you now to pick up your pen and paper. And I'm going to ask you to do a little bit of inner work. And I'm going to pose three questions to you. So here we go. Everyone got pen, paper? Oh, yeah, I suppose many of you like to write in your phones, which is also fine. So just three questions, not difficult. And I'm thinking if you could just respond to these questions and then you know, we'll come back for a little bit more conversation. If questions come up in your mind, do keep posting them in the chat box and we'll take them up later. But you can start to write them in the chat box now. So the first question I'm going to ask you is, who can be free? Who is it really who can be free? Because we're all birds and we're all in a cage. And there's birds out there flying as well. So who is it that can be free? So I'll give you a few minutes to write down. Who can be free? Can you be free? Can I be free? Can anyone be free? Do you have to have certain prerequisites to be free? Who can be free? Won't take you long just to write down maybe one or two lines about who is it who has this right to freedom. Okay, so if you're ready, question number two. What do I want to be free from? Maybe it's not what, maybe it's who. Who do I want to be free from? Is it my mother-in-law? Is it my boss? Maybe I'm fed up of being a dad. You know, I don't want to feel, I don't want this role anymore. I've had enough. Who or what do I want to be free from? So make a list of at least five things that you want to be free from. Things or people, circumstances, situations. It's so important to know what our mind tells us is our trap, isn't it? Who or what do I want to be free from? Okay. I hope uh, most of you have written down something. And then, what is my cage? The third question is, what is my cage? In other words, we blame the outside world and say, it's the world out there that I want to be free from. But actually, there's something within some attitude towards that person, some about myself, some expectation 
of a situation or person. There's something that's created my cage. Something in me, some way of thinking, some way of feeling, some wiring inside me that has created my cage. So what is it that is my cage? Maybe it's a past memory. You know, maybe it's a past memory about someone. And that memory is what's keeping me trapped and not allowing me to let go. What is my cage? So if anyone has the courage, you can write in the chat box what your cage is. Is it the way you feel about someone? The way you feel about a situation? Is it a particular way of behaving? Getting angry is my cage, you know? Is it not being able to forgive that is my cage? What is it that's trapping me? I think it's out there, but actually the cages, some, something that I have created as a reaction, as a response. Don't worry, you won't be judged. Nobody's really, not many people know each other on the call, I'm sure. So feel free to write any one thing. Identify five at least. Usually a cage has, as you've seen, right? It has many iron rods. You can see all the iron rods, but even if you just find a few of these rods and identify them, because it's so important to know who or what I tend to blame, you know, and that was the second question. And then who or what I want to be free from, but then also to identify once I realize it's not the who or the what out there, it's my own cage. It's a cage that I have created in response to all the who's and what's out there. So I'm waiting for a few more of you to write in the chat box. I see some amazing responses coming through. I think one of them is something that's um, probably something that we all reflect on sometimes, which is the fear of failure. And if anyone has failed ever in the past, then that little seed of I don't want to fail again can be there and it's usually there. And to be really honest with you, it's a tough one because you have to fail in life to learn and to move on. But it's seeing the failure in a different way. It's seeing it as a process of growth. There's nobody in the world who hasn't failed at something and there's nobody in the world who will stop failing as long as they're alive. It's a bit like the fear of making mistakes, you know? And another very interesting one is starting over, being able to actually press the reset button and say, here we go again. It's okay to start again. Yeah. I can kind of identify with all of them. And somehow I feel that all of us have put ourselves into similar cages. I don't think the cages are extremely different. Unforgiving thoughts, you know, being able to forgive myself and forgive others is such a huge one. To be able to let bygones be bygones, let the past sit in the past, rather than the past become my present. In which case the past will become my future as well, because that's all I'll ever see. That's all I will ever project. Absolutely. 
Somebody's saying to be free from beliefs, the thoughts, ideas, concepts, rituals, habitual, unwholesome behavior, and past mental conditioning. Yes, very, very beautiful. To be honest with you, fear is a topic in itself, isn't it? I think all of us could identify one or two of those rods being fear of this or fear of that. And fear is such a cage that it limits everything I do. It kind of holds me back from my highest and fullest potential. The desire to achieve, yeah, it's another very big one. It's almost like it drives us, you know, that if I don't achieve, I'm not free. I'm not complete. And actually, you are complete without achieving anything right here, right now. You're free. You don't have to be anything. You don't have to do anything. But it's a pressure that we put on ourselves. It's a limitation I put on myself that I'm not free. I'm not flying. I'm not okay until I achieve. And then, you know, the benchmark, it keeps going up. I achieve here, and then I put the benchmark up, and then I achieve that, and then the benchmark keeps going up, doesn't it? And it's almost like I push myself so much. And I can never say that's it. You're okay wherever you are. And so I'm constantly closing that door to freedom. And yes, free from the self and also people's expectations of me. One is the expectations I put on myself. One is the expectation I put on others. And then there's the expectations that people put on me. And what do I do? I embrace them and I think, yes, you expect of me, let me also expect of myself. And again, I'm limited because if the expectation doesn't get fulfilled, then I'm not free. I'm not complete. I'm not able to say all as well. Again, it's a limitation. It's a limitation to me saying life is okay just as it is. So it's really, really amazing how you've all done this inner work and come up with such amazing thoughts. The cage feels the people who are close to me, you know, and um, usually it's the closer the people are to me that, you know, that they feel like they are the ones who are putting me in a cage. But actually if I shifted you somewhere else, it's the people who would be close to you there because I need their acceptance. I need their acknowledgement. You know, I need them to be the way I want them, the way I want them to be for me to feel okay. Otherwise, you know, I don't feel that it is okay. That if people don't understand me, then I can't fly free. I need them to understand me for me to be okay and for life to be okay. And um, someone else says, accepting the circumstances uh, the way they are. And I don't have a choice. And I think sometimes I forget that whatever the circumstances might be in my life, I have a choice how I feel. Because my mind and my heart are mine. How I think about the circumstances is in my control. Unless I tell myself that it's in someone else's control, in which case I'm sitting in my cage. Yeah. Imperfections, you know, I'm not perfect. Can I be a bird that is imperfect and yet I'm flying free? Or do I have to be completely perfect? Absolutely, you know, 100% and only then am I free. Is anyone going to be flying out there if I wait for perfection? I don't think so. You know, I wonder maybe if that too is a limitation that I put on myself, the need to be perfect. That until I'm perfect in every single area, I'm not okay. Fear of old habits that can spoil my relationships. Absolutely. You know, all these old habits within me that are constantly a limitation because that's the only way I need, I know to be. So anyway, I think these are fantastic fantastic ways of describing 
this amazing cage that I have created in my life um, and that I believe are actually keeping me inside. And honestly, they are nothing but a comfort zone. It's something that I have constantly repeated in my mind. I have strengthened this cage by believing that this is all there is. And I'm not prepared to let go. If I don't let go, I can't change. If I don't let go, I'll be sitting in that cage forever. If I don't let go, I can't be the new me. I can't go back to being free. And yet when you look out there, honestly, the bird that is freest, that seems to be the strongest, that seems to be able to do whatever it wants to do, is the eagle. The eagle is flying so high. The eagle knows exactly what to do to fly free. The eagle seems to be the lord of the skies. So what is it that the eagle has? You know, the eagle is a strong bird. The eagle has might. It's almighty, the almighty lord of the skies. And I'm going to just um, take bits and pieces of the eagle to show you what it is that sets us free and how you can set yourself free right here, right now, today in this workshop. And you don't have to be sitting inside this cage. It has an open door anyway. You can choose to let yourself free. So the eagle, firstly, has eyes that can see from far away. The eagle flies so high. The eagle has a broad perspective. The eagle doesn't sit and look at only what's happening in front of its nose. The eagle understands what has happened. The eagle understands what is happening right now and the link between the past and the present. The eagle understands that what is happening now is a precursor to the future. The way I think today is going to lead me ahead. The eagle can see it all. The eagle doesn't have a limited vision on this person is like this and that person is like that. And, oh, I'm stuck in this situation. The eagle understands that life is a journey of choices. And so having a perspective that is so broad, like the eagle, sets me free. Not getting caught up in the little stuff. Realizing that my choices of the past have led me where I am. Everyone's choices of the past have made them who they are today. And that's okay. And that whatever I want in the future, if I want to be free of my cage, I can be, be free by just letting go of the past. And all of the wiring that I've accumulated all the programming I've accumulated. And in that way, my future is free. Flying free is my future because I make that choice. So the eagle flies so high up above and it sees everything. And it never gets limited by just the now, just the here perspective, perception. In other words, broad-mindedness, broad vision helps to set me free. Seeing beyond what I see now, seeing beyond my cage, my limitations, my expectations, sets me free. The eagle has two other things. It has wings. It has a left and a right wing. <laughs> One wing is the wing of courage. You have to have courage to fly. You have to have courage to let go of the past. You have to have courage to be something in the future that you weren't today, that you weren't in your past. So if I don't have courage, I can't let go. 
I can't let go of all my expectations, of my old ways of thinking, of my attachments, of the things that I've always been. I need courage to change. The eagle also has faith. The second wing is the wing of faith. The eagle knows that I have enough within me to be free, to be independent of any circumstance or any situation or any person. That I can be free no matter what happens in my life just by choosing thoughts that are unlimited, feelings that are unlimited. The minute I say it's people out there, circumstances out there, situations out there, the place I live in, the family I was born in, the culture I was born in, the minute I start to blame others, it's almost like I've taken away the faith that I can be bigger than that. I can be beyond that. The eagle doesn't create that cage around itself. The eagle has faith that it is bigger than the cage. It has faith in itself. Faith that whatever has come along its way has just been a wonderful teaching, a wonderful lesson. In fact, if there's a storm, the eagle just flies higher. It knows that it has the capacity, the capability. So courage and faith the two wings of the eagle that help it to fly high. The third thing the eagle has is talons. Talons means the claws of the eagle. The eagle, when it holds on to something, it holds on so tightly. And when it lets go, just let go and move ahead, move on, move up. In the same way, we must know what to hold on to. What am I putting into my subconscious mind? What memories have I got stuck in there? Again, memories of myself, memories of others, memories of what this one did to that one, what this person said to that person, things that I did that were wrong. Somebody talked about forgiveness, letting go, forgiving, very deeply connected. And so the ego is sensible enough to know what it is, and when it has to let go. Because as long as I keep holding on, I'm stuck inside the cage. I can't be free. But the minute I release myself from my own comfort zone, once I release myself from all the stuff that I've put into my subconscious mind that has programmed me to believe a certain way, to desire or expect certain things, even from myself, I will remain stuck. So now I have another little question to ask you. And um, again, you're going to need pen and paper or a phone or something to write into. So I'm going to ask you, what is it that you need to let go right now that will set you free? One thing, one limiting belief, one expectation, one old memory. Forgiving one person might be you for one thing you did. I'm not asking you to have a huge amount of forgiveness, just one thing, because we're going to work one bar at a time. But for today, I'd like you to identify one thing that you need to let go of so that you can come to the door and flap your wings and just take a little flight outside. Maybe you don't become an eagle, but at least you can take a little fly outside, you know, a little flight, so that you can taste freedom. What is one thing you can let go of? all the things that you identified that were your cage. You have so many options. 
I asked you to write down five, but I'm sure, you know, there's plenty more bars that make up your cage. So let me know one thing you can let go of. And once you've done that, ask yourself, what courage and faith do I need to have? After I've let go. So that I can actually move forward. What courage and faith do I need to have? So that I can move forward. Remember the two wings of the eagle. The wing of courage, the wing of faith. That's what propels me ahead. Even if I let go, I still need courage. I need energy that pushes me forward. I need faith. And the last little part of this exercise is, how can I see things differently? How can I see myself with a broader vision? How can I see myself in a more unlimited way? Having done all this work, how can I make sure that my vision remains broad? I don't get trapped in one person, one situation, one, 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 one. Somebody's writing to me, um, very nice, so I won't mention the name, but the anxiety of losing a memory fast due to an angry manager in the past. You know, it's, um, you've had an angry person in your life, could be a manager, could be a family member, could be someone at school. And um, sometimes we just need to actually be able to let go, not let go of the learning and how to manage the situation, but let go the effect and the impact that that has had on me. So that creates courage, it creates peace. And actually, you know, all of this cage is nothing but the impact that life has had on you. It's the impact that you have held inside your subconscious mind. And that is what is holding you in, even though the door is always open wide. And so I'm letting go of the effect or the impact that life has had so that I can go back to being free. And so I hope that uh, some of you have had the opportunity through this workshop to work through what it is that is still seated deep down within you, that is creating this limitation, that's creating a block, that's creating a feeling of being stuck. I think even for spiritual students who have been on this path for a long time, you know, we can sometimes believe that we're free and everything is okay. But when I see myself repeating patterns, negative patterns of beliefs, of expectations, I realize that I'm blocking my own growth. You know, I'm limiting my own movement forward. And the interesting thing is a spiritual journey means letting go at every step of different things. And the more I let go of, the lighter I feel and the higher I can fly. And so today you might be just a little bird taking a little flight out of the cage. But as you identify more things that you can let go, the more you'll be able to fly higher, like the eagle, fly stronger. And lastly, I'd just like to touch on one more topic, which is the topic of power. 
that until I don't empower myself, I don't create more strength within. It's very, very hard for me to create any change. Even though we identify things in workshops and we think, oh, yes, I found out what it is that's blocking me. Once I've learned to be free from that, I need to make sure that I don't go back into the cage, that I don't trap myself again. Because it's the power, the courage that actually helps me to stay beyond the influence of the old. And this is where meditation is so, so important. The regular practice of empowerment of the inner self allows me to consistently remind myself that freedom is my right, freedom is my original state. Independence, which is so linked with freedom, you know, being independent, non-dependent on what has happened in my life, on the people around me, on circumstances, situations, my incredible past, the whole story that I carry, that I can be independent, I can be free from all of that. If I let go, then I move on. For that, I need to keep drip-feeding myself with power. And a daily practice of meditation really helps me to do that. It allows me to empower myself without relying on someone else giving me the power or opening the cage door for me or calling me outside of my cage. It allows me to stay a flying bird, free. So I think it's time now for me to take some questions. Um, so if you'd like to send in any questions in the chat box, you're most welcome to. Because I think sometimes questions are about real life. Um, but Dimple, do you have any questions for me? Anything that you'd like to ask? First of all, I would like to say thank you. Your analogy of the bird, the eagle. And, you know, I like the part when you mentioned that uh, you are actually free. And it's just a matter of believing that you're free. I mean, you see all the birds outside and then you think, that you are locked up in this cage, but you don't realize the cage is actually open. And that was so beautifully said, actually. And I just love that analogy. So let's see if there's some questions here. And uh, I think you put a lot of questions to them for them to think and ponder. And yeah, talking about fear. So um, yeah, if you want to, if anyone, I don't see any questions here yet. I guess they're still thinking. If anybody wants to raise up their hand and ask questions, I think uh, we can uh, open up, you know, let you speak. Yeah, I think there's one question that's come in. Is this, uh, oh, they're just asking if this uh, recording, if it's recorded. Yes, it is recorded, even the first two episodes. And actually many other, it is all recorded and it is in the YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, we will be, you know, yes, Meditation Cafe. Anyone has any questions? Most welcome. <laughs> I like that part when you said that, uh, you know, it is your own fear that sets you trapped in your cage. And freedom is so personal to everyone. And uh, it's so nice to know that actually we are free. You know, the question that you said, who can be free? First I wrote, I can be free. Then I changed it and I said, I am free. <laughs> Not I can be, I am. So, yeah, there's no questions yet. Anything you want to maybe throw to them or something? Yeah, sure, sure. It's interesting, isn't it, how... We always tend to project it onto others, you know, that that person is trapped in this and that person is free. I wish I was like that. And yet I think if we just ponder, if we just kind of turn within, 
and realize that everything that I see in someone else is something that I can be. And everything I see that's limiting someone else is probably something that limits me too. But perhaps I haven't recognized it. And many people want to be free, but find it hard, find it hard to point out exactly what the rods of their cage is, or what the rods of their cage are, I'm sure there's many. Um, but the realization that the door is always open, and then it's my choice. And even though we believe or we feel that culture and family limit us in some ways, I don't believe that the um, limitations are something that we need to see as limitations. There may be situations, but you can work around them. You can always work around them. You know, a simple thing for me, the hot weather in the UAE has always been a little bit of a challenge. But I've learned that if I actually go for walks in some of the big malls, you know, when I go do my shopping, there's always some big mall around wherever I am. Just go in there and walk for an hour. It's air conditioned. It's really, you know, and while I'm walking, I usually put something on, you know, my ear pods and I listen to something. It's a very enriching hour. So sure, I might not be out in the fresh air, but I get in my walk. I get to be with people. I see people. I don't feel like I'm cooped up like a little chicken in a cage, you know? Um, so, you know, we have to find ways, creative ways, creative ways to let ourselves be free. Beautiful. And someone says, actually, how to be free from anxiety? Well, anxiety and worry. These are two things that are often connected with our vision of the future. Most people are anxious or worried about the future. What will happen? You know, how will we manage? What if this and what if that? And I think a lot of it is perhaps based on experiences of the past. You know, something has happened, it's left an impact, it's left an impression, and that then creates a projection into the future. Not a projection that is positive, that is full of trust, but a projection that is quite the opposite, which is more about, I'm not sure how things will work out. So one of the wings of the eagle was faith. And I think the opposite of worry and anxiety is actually building faith. Looking at everything that has worked in the past and that is working for you again. And I would probably recommend that you create some affirmations, affirmations that are positive and based on faith towards the future and keep repeating them as a meditation every day, that no matter what happens, everything will be okay. And that helps to get rid of anxiety because anxiety has a very deep effect on my stomach, on my gut, on my digestion. So people who tend to be quite anxious um, are those who have sometimes, I guess, uh, digestive problems. Yeah, I hope that helps. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, I realize the minute I, you know, am off my balance or something, I do have a stomach problem. And then I realize, oh, something, you know, not that I ate something wrong. Maybe I was thinking or doing something wrong or the anxiety. That's so beautifully said. And someone shared, this is very interesting. It's a sharing. I learned that I need to give myself at least every day, one hour during my busy life. Uh, one hour, and it can uh, turn your energy and thoughts 180 degrees. Now, this is very nice because I often believe in me time. And uh, maybe you could elaborate a little bit on this. Well, you know, it's interesting that the most important person in my life is me. And yet, when I look at my priority list and my to-do list, I'm often right at the bottom. When I get all of that done, then I'll have me time. And I think what uh, this person, my other, just commented was so true. If I can turn that around and say, first thing in the morning, the most important person in my day, in my life, 
Let me sustain that person. Let me have some time to reconnect with me, the real me, to re-energize myself, to empower myself so that no matter what comes in the day, I face the day with that inner strength. You know, it's, it's the most rewarding thing you can do. It's the most self-respecting thing you can do to give yourself time. I agree in me time. <laughs> Lovely. That's so nice. You know, instead of putting everyone and then me at the end, it's turn it around and put me first and then all the rest. That's so nicely said. And I think this is what makes a lot of difference in our lives. And someone put this question. I'll read it out. How to change our thoughts? If we keep thinking of a particular thing, even though, even uh, through during sleep time, and it's affecting our sleep. How do we overcome that? Yeah. So our thoughts have become nothing but patterns. Some people call them habits. I like to call it programming. So I've just gotten used to thinking a particular way. I'd like to go back to the affirmations again. Write the, so if you have negative thoughts, write the opposite positive thought. Go back to a positive affirmation. And what I would do is to stick them everywhere in your house, in the bathroom, on the fridge, on your computer, literally catch yourself wherever you look, wherever you go, maybe on the dash in your car as well. Make sure that you surround yourself with these positive affirmations, positive thoughts, really, because the affirmation, when you read it, it's creating a thought. And it's empowering you again and again and again. And what it's actually doing is it's overwriting the old programming. Every time that negative programming comes up or the old negative thought. And before you sleep at night, repeat it. Maybe 10 times to yourself and then sleep. And then tell me what kind of thoughts you have in your sleep. Because your sleep is nothing but your mind is shut down and whatever is in the subconscious starts to float up. So if the last thing to put in your subconscious are positive affirmations, well, what's going to come up in your sleep? I hope that helps. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. And I think I skipped a question, but I think you've answered that question. Well, I'll read it out anyway, if you want to add in something to it. To fly free, you need to strengthen yourself, this person says. But it's a very hard journey. Can you please tell me how to go through it? Yeah. You know, nobody has an easy journey. Nobody has a journey from A to B straight line. There's no one like that that I've ever met in my life. And I, I'm sure you haven't either. Some people have more of a squiggly line. Some people have less of a squiggly line. Some people have ups and downs. So the journey is going to be unique. And the journey is going to be whatever you need to bring you, you know, whatever lessons it is that, life has brought you here to learn but I think what matters to me is that at every step of the way we look back and take lessons and take teachings from whatever we have overcome because when I see every step that I have taken it strengthens the soul it strengthens my heart whereas if I see all my failures and mistakes they weaken me and anyway, I don't believe in the word failure or the word mistake, really, because each one of us is actually trying to do our very best. Each one of us is trying to get through life in the easiest possible way. So there is really no mistake or failure. It's all just a learning. It's all just a movement forward, really. And if you keep reminding yourself of how incredibly wonderful you are, amazing you are, and how you have taken every step to make that journey possible. Um, I probably would come back to the affirmations. Looks like all the solutions today are positive thinking and affirmations, really. All that's holding me back is my own programming of negative thinking. And all that will take me forward will be thinking positively and understanding that, you know, I can do it. Courage, faith in myself. Let go of the old programming. Let go of the way you thought before. Maybe even let go of that life is difficult. 
you know, and just say life is different for each one of us. Life is unique. Life is challenging. Yes, challenges come. Not difficult, though. Difficulty is what I create of it. Difficulty is my cage. Yeah, that's exactly the thought I had. You know, if it is difficult, then it is actually an opportunity, I believe, and change it around in things. And someone has given a lot of positive affirmations here, which I think is very good. (laughs) Powerful nuggets of wisdom, they say, use daily affirmations to overcome anxiety. I am powerful. I am limitless. I am strong. This is so lovely, somebody sharing. And um, yeah, I think, uh, note to myself, I am learning, life is a journey, life is unique, so many affirmations, I think it's so beautiful. You know, I've I actually got a, a question that's come yes, to me, please. A, a, In fact, a I direct to question. Ask you that. Sure. Um, somebody has said that there are some people who are very negative and have limiting beliefs. I've tried to turn conversations around, you know, when you, know, when you try so hard to make a negative conversation into a positive one? Um, but, you know, some people are just, you know, prone to just believing that that's how it is. And so this person is asking me, you can't really help everyone, can you? Um, I honestly don't believe you can help anyone. People help themselves. Just as nobody really helps me, I help myself. You know, the best possible advice can come to you if your doors are shut that advice stays out there. What really helps you is opening the doors, keeping conversations going. You know, there's a saying in English, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And so it's like, we we feel like, oh, that person came at just the right time. And yeah, sure. I, I accept that certain people come our way and it feels like, oh gosh, that's just what I needed. But you know why they came? They came because you are open to learning. Quite possibly they've said the same thing to you last year and you don't even remember it, you know? So I think it's the same with everyone. When I see that people are a bit stuck and they want to be negative and they want to stay in that space, they want to be in their cage, they want to keep complaining about the cage, then I sometimes understand that it's not yet their time. This is what I tell myself. I never give up on them. But I just say to myself, well, maybe they're not ready, not quite ready yet. And I never stop believing in them and I never stop being around them. But sometimes I throw things back at them, things like, well, that's your opinion. That's your way of looking at it. There is another way. Because that can help people sometimes just think and go, well, what do you mean there's another way? What other way? I can't understand what other way there is. And that starts to open them up to listening to another way. But if they're not open and they're quite happy to stay in that negative comfort zone, then yes, it's okay. It's okay to leave them there and just keep affecting them positively with good vibrations because you can do that. And nobody can stop you from thinking good and sending good energy to them because that energy does have an impact. And you never know. One day, they suddenly choose to open the doors and let something in. Lovely. It's so nice. I mean, we always think that the teacher, oh, you know, I was just thinking about that or this helped me, but we didn't realize that that thing was always there. It's just that we were not open to it. And so we didn't understand or it didn't reach us. And the minute we open our door, it's there. It has always been there. And uh, do you have any other questions on your side? There's nothing here so far? I don't uh, know. No, I think that's it. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's fine. <laughs> anything that you want to share? I think we still have time. Yeah. Maybe we can just close then with um, just final few thoughts, you know. And um, it brings me back to a law that we all know about. It's called the law of karma, which I like to personally call the law of responsibility. Because I think that whenever life seems to be a bit difficult and I feel a little bit stuck, it really is up to me to be responsible for that feeling of being stuck. 
and to say to myself, what can I do? How can I think differently? How can I look at things differently? How can I change my perspective? How can I take responsibility for everything I am thinking and feeling and choose to create that change? When I take responsibility, when I start to realize that this cage is my creation, then it gives me the option of being free. For as long as I believe that I am encaged by something or someone, I will remain stuck. And really, this is what the spiritual law of karma teaches me. That every impact that has come into my life, everything that I am holding inside me is my choice. Therefore, it is my choice to let go. Therefore, it is my choice to fly free. So by taking that responsibility, I actually am empowering myself and allowing myself to be my highest potential, which is what awakening is all about. You know, all of these the series of talks, all of these sessions have been about awakening myself. And if you understand the law of karma, you have awakened your inner responsible self, your empowered self to the highest level of enlightenment. So stay free and fly free. And we'll all see each other up there. And hopefully we'll give each other the courage to go even higher. So thank you all for joining. And I think we're going to move into a few moments of meditation. Is that right? Yes, it's so nicely explained, your law of karma. And there are comments that you can read on the comment chat. They said, they have said that you have explained it so beautifully. And I think uh, with such a beautiful session, I think you should lead us to a guided meditation. Let's relax, stay free and fly free. So I'll just invite you to put down your pens now. <laughs> no more writing. Pens, paper, phones. And just sit really comfortably on your chair, preferably with your back straight, but comfortable. And just allow yourself to be present in this moment. This is me time. This is time that I have allocated to empower This is time for me to respect myself. And so I start with just an affirmation. I am free. I was born free. And that status of freedom, that state of inner liberation still exists somewhere deep inside the self. And I reflect on what has taken me away from being completely empowered and completely free. And I reflect on what has engaged me.
my own thoughts, my own feelings of the past, my own vision of myself, my vision of others, my old beliefs of right and wrong. my own expectations. My own fears. And I see that all of that is nothing but the impact of my life's journey. And the way I have seen things, the vision I've had of life. And today, I realize I can be free from all of that. I can be free from the entire cage. just by knowing that I am greater than anyone and anything in my life. That I have the capacity of finding a solution to every problem. That I have the capacity of finding Positivity in every person, in every situation. So in this way, I discover, I rediscover a new me. A new me who is not trapped in the past and in my old ways of thinking and being. A new me who is the me of my choice A me who I want to be for the rest of my life. Does I keep remembering this new me? I set myself. Free. I, the eagle, take off the costume of being the trapped bird. And I fly free. It just takes one thought. I am free. And those three words set me free. So everyone just spread out your hands as far as you can. And remember, there's no cage that can trap you anymore. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ona. It was lovely. All the three episodes 
was so beautifully um, blending into one into the other. It just flowed. And yet independent of each other. Even I think if those who miss the first two and just starting from here, it doesn't matter. It benefits so much. It's so relevant and so beautiful. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you all for joining and for staying with us on this journey. And for those who just joined in, stay with the Meditation Cafe because there's plenty more to come. <laughs> yes, you. actually, there's a few more announcements that I would like to make. And uh, Sister Sona is not leaving us. She's going to be with us. That's a uh, good news to hear. So what I have to say is that in conjunction with UNP Day, which is on 21st of September, actually, we have already started sharing 21 moments of peace in our WhatsApp community since the 1st of September. So we hope you are in there and enjoying those. We have also created a new platform for discussion on practical spirituality, wisdom and insights. This is a WhatsApp group to senior meditation teachers, Helen and Kim will be permanently and on board and guest speakers of Meditation Cafe, like in this case, Sister Sona. Ms. Sona will join the platform for two weeks. So if there are any unanswered questions, anything that you would still like to or continue to ask, you know, or if you have missed out anything, kindly type it there, share it with us. And I'm sure Sister Sona will uh, definitely, you know, be very um, happy to answer those questions for you. So please stay connected and tuned. And whenever we have any speakers, this is going to be the practice to help you more, to serve you better. So the link of this is going to be shared in the chat box below. So you, if you have not joined the WhatsApp group or, you know, you can always contact us. So also coming up in December... We have healing workshops to close 2023 and welcome 2024. So there's a lot to offer at Meditation Cafe. So stay tuned and be with us. And before we bid goodbye, say thank you to all of you wonderful participants, because without you, this would not be possible. And before we say goodbye, I think we would like to see everyone's faces. If you can switch on your cameras and we could all wave and say goodbye to each of us. Yes, please switch on your camera. We would love to see all of you. And, uh, you know, Sister Sona, we all like to see who we are talking to. Yes. And uh, yes. Nice. If you want more cameras, please switch on, <laughs> you know. <laughs> hmm, it's nice, Sister Harsha, Louisa. I see Rajeshwari. I see Pratipan. I see Sister May. I see hmm, Ivy Lena. I see you. And uh, yes, anyone else? Please switch on. Say bye-bye. Till we meet again and we'll keep you posted. Thank you.